What is up guys, this is Lintio, coming at you today with a debut deck profile of my Shadow Prediction Princess deck, the Shadow Turret deck that is a pretty interesting one I've had for a little bit, but I haven't really done too much with it, um, so with the release of Bosch, I decided to do it, and then obviously with the next set, um, this deck's going to have a big boost in the form of uh, pre-preparation right, so without further ado, we'll go straight into it. Uh, so this is probably going to be the only profile that I get. Uh, that I'll do, sorry, until pre-preparation rights comes out, because it, as I said, it does get a massive boost. So next, first up, we have the boss monster, Little Miss Prediction Princess herself, the queen, or king, depends on um, what you want to say. It's probably a king. Um, either way, this is one of your main combo pieces. You need to get to this as quickly as possible, um, simply because it means that you can set up with uh, the pot of forbidden and such. So um, yeah, having this at three is a must, in my opinion, and uh, there's, there's really no other way to run it. Next up, I've got three Pot of the Forbidden. Now, this is a lot, and I feel that it could technically clog, but it actually doesn't clog all as much as I thought it would. So it's a target for Shadow Fusion, so if I have uh, any in hand. Also, it's a straight, up, um, a straight up tribute to summon out, obviously, the ritual. And uh, yeah, overall, it's actually all right at three. I thought it might be a bit worse, but it's actually not bad. When the new um, flip card, I forget what it is, comes out, uh, the one that you can search a flip to your hand, um, this will probably go down to two or maybe something like that, but I need to do a bit more testing, but right now three has actually worked really well, so um, yeah, it is working completely fine. Three Manju, it's it's a ritual deck, so you have to run the Manjus, I don't really need to say too much about them to be honest. Next up we have three of Little Miss uh, Coin, Coin Norma, Coin Norma. Um, I always forget the flaming name. I remember the other one. Anyway, um, we run three of this because it simply gets you to pot to boo as quickly as possible. It's a really, really great card, um, and I, I just love it. Going first turn, if you can't do the ritual, you set this, and then your opponent kind of is a little bit drawn back as to what it could be, and they might only attack into one thing with one thing. So then, you know, it's pretty decent. So, uh, yeah, so that is the uh, ritual engine or the uh, prediction princess engine. So going on to the shallows, we have two beasts. I originally had three, just because it helped me get to combo pieces faster, but um, in recent times, I've cut it to two because it felt like a little bit too much and it was getting a bit annoying. And while it was, yeah, plus, um, it didn't really work that well at three. So two is working fine. Two dragon, popping that back row is nice. Um, and yeah, to be honest, the shadows, uh, I don't really need to say too much about them because they're kind of all self-explanatory. You guys know how the shadows work. Um, two school martyr, you know, uh, popping and uh, flipping, great. Popping and flipping, that should be like an R&B album, <laughs> trademark. Uh, two hedgehog uh, and then two falco, because you know it's it's two 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 of everything. It's the best ratios in my opinion for this deck of this version, I um, mean it just works well. Final monster is Blacklist of Soldier because there is nothing like sacking with this card, especially since it's common from the Yugi's deck world thing. So yeah, really good card and it uh, works well on the deck. Three Prediction Ritual. You have to run this card, and it's a really good ritual. I wish a lot of other rituals were like this, to be honest. Being able to banish itself to add any other Prediction Princess apart from, obviously, the ritual is really, really kind of good because it means that you can either discard this with, like, Twin Twister or something or set it as a bluff. Even if your opponent destroys it, you're like, that's fine. I can just banish it to get the ritual and get out the ritual card in other ways. So it's a really good card, and you really do need to run it at three. And it only gets better when actual uh, pre-preparation rights comes out, if I'm honest. Three Shadow Fusion. Now, first thing I will say is I'm not running El Shadow Fusion. And the reason why is the um, the reasoning behind it is simply that El Shadow Fusion was a great card to use for OTKs. And now that Construct's gone, it's completely banned um, at this moment in time. El Shadow Fusion is just kind of lackluster because it means that you just lose cards out of your hand. Shadow Fusion is always going to be good. Um, and running it at 3 is really great because that's a max amount that you can do. And you have to have it at 3 if I'm honest. If you're running Shadows, you need 3. And uh, it's a great card. Being able to, you know, send stuff from the grave. It means that you can also ditch out your dead or uh, Coinagum and also Pot of uh, Taboo. It means you can get rid of those dead ones for Shikanaga. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. And uh, just in general, it really helps the deck. Two Twin Twister, nothing like popping back row and going plus. 
simply because with your shadows, you know, it's pretty good. And also, as I said, it means you can get dead cards out of your hand or anything like that. You can set up your graveyard a bit more. For example, if you've um, if you've got Prediction Princess Ritual on the field and you've only got, like, Pot of the Boo in your hand, it means you can just discard it and then M-Phase bring it back and boop. So, uh, yeah, really good. Twin Twist is just also a really good back row removal card anyway. Uh, the one Foolish Burial, you know, this just... I play Shadows and other things, so it, it kind of works. And then also the one of Booker Moon. This card should really be more than one, if I'm completely honest, but that's a different matter. Booker Moon is really solid um, because, you know, you can get your own effects if they want to attack into... Uh, for example, uh, one common use for this is if um, I've got my Pot of Daboon attack mode, only 2,000 to go to attack it. I'm just like, okay, chain my Booker Moon, flip it down, flip it up, um, and I get effects. So, yeah, it's really solid and just overall in good. Three, Solemn Strike. Uh, this deck is very much about controlling. It can OTK, but it does like to fall back on the controlling aspect where you have Pot of Boo, the Ritual, and Chikanagra out, and you know, you're just constantly looking at your opponent's hand and dictating the speed and such. So, Solemn Strike really goes well into it, and just in general, it's a really great card, and, you know, kind of dumb. 1,500 to negate Special Summon or Effect is pretty good. One, Sinister Shadow Games. Now, this deck doesn't completely revolve around the shadows. It can go out on a different tangent. Um, but the since the shadow games, I've only ever found using one per duel, if that. So uh, having more was kind of a bit of a waste, if I'm honest. Like it's nice flipping up shadow cards, but yeah, it's it's just kind of weird. Like I I I just found myself only wanting one, so that's why I've got that. The one core, you know, you need to run the core, if I'm honest. Uh, one Vanity's Emptiness, the card's just good, um, and in general it means that you can stop lots of stuff going on. You know, it's Vanity's, don't really say too much about it. The one Solemn Warning, card's great. And then the one Bottomless as well, just because, you know, there are uh, Pendulums running around. So, the extra deck, we have two Shikanaga. Um, for the longest time I was running at three, but honestly, I never used three in a duel. The maximum I ever used in testing was two. And uh, worst case, if, if one is in the grave or both are in the grave, I can just bring it back with them um, with Falco. So, you know, it's pretty good. Shikanaga in general is just a boss. Two Winder. Winder's a great card against more so Rogue than anything. Um, against Pepe, it's, it's good, but it needs to be really well timed. And uh, that's where El Shadow Fusion kind of really came into it for me. But... I didn't have it enough times to, for it to properly work for me, so it was just a meh. Meh. It's a good disruption play, but um, being able to clear the board and then summon the window on your opponent is really nice, especially mid to late game, because if you go first turn, window, and they're just like, okay, set my pendulum, special summon the uh, miss value, you're just like, well, okay, that was a waste. Um, but yeah, the window is, should be used at uh, correct times, let's say. Going on to the synchros, we have the one Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier. The one Scrap Dragon. The one Scarlight. Card's really decent. Uh, the one Black Rose. The one uh, Clearwing. Uh, just for note, I would run um, Arcanite Magician in here. However, mine has completely vanished. I've been looking for the past 20 minutes. Absolutely gone. No idea where it is. So just so you know. Uh, Goyo and uh, Armides. Goyo's here just because of a rank six, uh, level 6, you know. Like yeah, any of your level 4s and Falco and such. But yeah, it's up to you if you want to run it. The one um, Rebellion Dragon, <clears throat> which is still pretty decent. The one 101. 101 or 101. The one Illuminescent Knight. And then finally, the one Castell to make it 15 in your extra deck. So that is it, guys. I hope you did enjoy the deck profile. As I said, it's something a little bit different for you. And um, I really do enjoy the deck. I think it is really fun. When Pre-Preparation Rights comes out, it's going to get oh so much better because it's literally like a one-card uh, XZ uh, ritual. And also with the new support uh, monster that comes out uh, that you can search out ritual cards. It's literally two-card combo to have this and Pot of uh, Forbidden on the fields because you just normal summon the... Um, the chick that searches out, or the, the bird, whatever it is, that searches out Pot of Taboo. Then you play Pre-Preparation Rites to get uh, the ritual and the spell. And then straight away go into it, send Pot of Taboo to the graveyard. And then profit in the end phase. So yeah, as I said, it's a really solid deck. I really do enjoy playing it. The Shadows help. Um, I, honestly, it's kind of the best engine for the deck that I've found in testing a lot. Um, it just works really well. 
Um, I kind of wanted to do a Herald version of this, but it's kind of difficult because it, uh, there's no real, really good combos, and they don't really intertwine all that well. But um, yeah, we'll see what I can come up in the future. But as I said, let me know down in the comment section below what you think of the deck. Make sure to give me a like, comment, subscribe, and I should catch you guys later.